Welcome to the instructional video on the PDR, the Physician's Desk Reference. The PDR is something of an almost infamous book when it comes to drug information. The reality of the PDR is, is that at its heart, the PDR is a collection of package inserts. It's reproductions of the exact same information that would be included on the little folded up package inserts that are included with every prescription. Now, the thing about this is, is that in order to get one's information into the PDR, the drug companies actually pay for this. What that means is that the PDR is essentially, technically speaking, one large advertisement. Now, the information in the PDR is in no way bad. It's, it's the exact same stuff that you are legally bound to include as far as package inserts are concerned. The information is just great. The problem is, is that particularly from the perspective of the pharmacist, the PDR is not the best reference because it can change from year to year and it is in no way comprehensive. When you start looking into it, a drug that was in it last year, if a, if a drug company is not really pushing it that much anymore, they may have shifted, it to some, shifted that money to something else. So drugs will mysteriously swap in and out of the PDR from edition to edition. So it's not the most reliable reference in the world as far as being comprehensive and, and being something that a, that a pharmacist or a physician can rely on exclusively. Now, that being said, it's a good reference. The reason why we really want you to know about it is because it's so ubiquitous. Virtually everyone, chances are, if you're watching this, you've probably used the PDR at least one time, or at least seen one or dealt with one in some way, and that's what that's true for most people. If any lay person, if any patient has had any experience with a print um, drug information reference, it's more than likely going to be this one. Even the smallest of uh, public libraries, they always have a PDR. Um, virtually every, of course, doctor's offices receive them for free, so they always have one around. They're just so prevalent that it's impossible to ignore them. They've become, you know, because of their ubiquity, they've become a, a, an important thing to at least be aware of, and you need to be able to navigate your way through it. Um, realistically, the chance is going to occur where you may be on rotations at a place where they have absolutely nothing else but the PDR. And if you don't have an internet connection or there's a heavy firewall or something and you can't get to the online stuff you need, you're going to need to know how to use this book to the best of your ability. So getting into the PDR, from the get-go, it's a little bit strange. Um, the content section, of course, has a, a, a good table of contents. You'll find that the organization of this book is a little bit strange and that as opposed to being just generally alphabetic by generic name or um, being organized by therapeutic class, because of the nature of the PDR, it's actually organized by drug company. So you're going to need to be able to figure out that way, although they do make it a little bit easier for you by having a variety of indexes, but you have to know how to use them and what to look for. The first thing to note is that the indexes um, are at the front of the book. The first one that you'll see in there, there are black tabs running along the, the, the uh, edge of the first three indexes. So section one lists the manufacturer's index. This is if you happen to know what the manufacturer is, of course you can look in here and it'll give you the reference for it. The second one, this which is usually pink, is the one that's probably most useful to you as a pharmacist is the brand generic name index. This is the place to come to find whether or not drug X that you're looking for is actually in this book or not. And as I said before, there's no guarantee that it will be. There's also a product category index, which is really more about, um, of course, therapeutic classes and subclasses of drugs if you wanted to look up things based on that. If you have something that you know it's a certain type of agent or it works in a certain way, but you're not, you don't quite remember the, um, the actual name of it, this is a good place to narrow that down. So it is somewhat useful, but it's a little strange for a book to have three completely separate indexes. After the indexes, there is actually a nice um, reproductive color plate, a reproduction of, of color plates um, showing a, a variety of different, all the, the, the drugs that are actually in here, showing the different dosage formats so you can actually see what these things look like. Um, it's a nice feature. Other than that, the actual monographs themselves are going to be very simple. Um, they are the basic information that you're going to find, as I mentioned before, in a package insert. Um, there's plenty of information here. They tend to be, uh, package inserts tend to be 
actually a good source of information for certain things, um, pharmacology information, adverse reactions, things like that. They tend to be, have a pretty good chunk of information in here. So what's in here, if you can get into it, tends to be very useful. But be aware that, as I said before, it's not necessarily going to be guaranteed that something is in here. Also be aware that when you're using these, package inserts are not necessarily the easiest things to thread through if you're, if you're pressed for time. If you're using uh, the PDR to answer a question on, for example, a lab practical, that's probably a bad idea. Number one, it's not the easiest thing to piece through in a very short period of time. Number two, like I said, you're not necessarily guaranteed the drug X is going to be in there. So really you should know how to use the PDR, but it really shouldn't be the first place that you turn to, even if you are used to it. You have access to several other, in fact virtually all the other print resources, as well as of course the online resources, are going to be much more useful to you and much more reliable. So keep that in mind. If you have any trouble with it, make sure to ask someone. Ask someone at the library or ask one of your pharmacy professors. And thanks for watching.